we are back with another episode of beers and budgeting. Stick around. This one's going to be really fun. Um, I'm tired. Let's do it. Hey guys, it's Justine, your host of the Debt-Free Millennials channel. And here we talk about all ways to help you achieve financial confidence, crush debt that leads to more fun and fewer payments. And you know, this guy, my husband, Kyle. So. And every single month we go over our real income and real expenses. And today's special beers and budgeting episode is brought to you by Monos. Monos is an amazing luggage and travel gear company, but more on that later, because first we got to hop into some really good beer. Yeah. And drink it. Man, you got some energy. I am so tired. This is like the third episode in a row. We're doing it at night. Anyways, here's the beer. It is from uh, well, one of my favorite breweries in LA, uh, I was shown this brewery by a friend after a Dodgers game. They make some fantastic beer called Highland Park. So if you're near downtown LA or by a Dodgers game, go to this brewery. They have great food, everything. So this is a barrel aged double bock. It's over 10% alcohol. So we're going to split this. Double bock. Double buck. Double buck you. It's over 10%. Yeah. Oh, and it's filled all the way full. Ooh, they did not skimp. No. The, they, there's literally no air in this can. <laughs> okay, so it's Friday night. It's dark out. I'm tired. I have to get on a plane tomorrow, so I was packing. I, and we're still doing the budget. We're still showing up. Yes. We're still doing it. So yes. So sometimes you just got to you just got to get it done. You just got to get it done. Uh, cheers. Cheers. I love this. Wow. Wow, that is really good. That is amazing. Holy cow. That is so good. It's it's very like rich and malty and it's a good cold night. Almost kind of like a stout, but not I don't know. It's really good. Yeah, it's very rich. I wouldn't drink like ten of these, but <laughs> okay. They're delicious. Let's get into the budget. Holy dokely. <laughs> Did it again. <laughs> All right. So we planned on bringing in 11,000. Mm -hmm. And somehow, some way, we brought in $18,600. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? You got your bonus. That's how that happened. You got a big bonus. Mm -hmm. And I also got paid off for some comp time as well. So I double dipped on that. Yeah. And I believe you got paid out for some of the work expenses from September. Yeah, that would make sense. Those are some big work expenses. Yeah, too. you had 1200 from October. So that got paid out as well. So, yeah, I feel very fortunate this month especially with my business being all over the place. Because um, <laughs> you had a conference, which was a big, you know, money pit. Well, Conferences money, are expensive. Money pit is not the right word. Sorry. No. It, that came off wrong. That no. was a bad word choice. Yeah. Conferences, uh, are, I love They're just I love high expense, but it's a good opportunity for growth and business and all those other fun buzzwords. Yeah. It, so I went to FinCon, which is a big annual conference for personal finance creators. This year it was in, in New Orleans, which I love New Orleans. But honestly, if you're 35, you don't belong on Bourbon Street. At this point, it's just like the first time when I turned 30 was great. The second time now as a 35 year old, I'm just like. I, yeah, no. My dad described it as a sewer. It pretty much is. I thought that was kind of funny. It pretty much is. But you know what? Made... The rest of New Orleans is great. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And you know what made that, that trip just really, really special is that I was able to travel there and back really easily with the comfort of my new Monos luggage. Love it. You guys have to check it out. In 2014, on the 4th of July, I wasn't in America. 
I wasn't wearing red, white, and blue, and certainly wasn't lighting fireworks off into the night sky. But to be clear, there were fireworks. I had traveled to Zurich, Switzerland, where my boyfriend proposed to me next to Lake Zurich under a brilliant night sky. He gave me a journal and told me, this is our adventure journal. I want you to fill the pages with the many adventures we will go on as husband and wife. I've always been fascinated with our planet and the way people live. Since I was a kid, I had dreamed of visiting faraway places and knew two things had to be in order to to fulfill this part of my life, my finances, and well-made travel gear. When I stumbled across Monos, it became clear that they are more than a company that makes luggage. Their philosophy is all about traveling mindfully. As Monos puts it, travel is what you make of it. For some, it's an escape from everyday life, but for others, it's a chance to grow and learn, to explore places near and far with wonder and curiosity, with gratitude and graciousness, to greet the world with open eyes and arms and an open mind and heart. We founded Monos with these travelers in mind because we are these travelers too. When I was shopping for a new luggage set, I knew it needed to be durable, easy to use, and reasonably priced. And Monos not only checks those boxes, they are also one of the first luggage brands to be climate neutral certified, which means they measure, offset, and reduce their carbon emissions in every aspect of their business operations. Achieving financial confidence allowed me to explore more parts of this earth, and Monos makes it possible for me to travel travel with ease. My Monos luggage not only holds the items I need to feel comfortable during my travels, it's also the container that brings a piece of my travels back home. Click the link in the description box for 10% off your Monos purchase by using code DEBTFREEMILLENNIALS at checkout. Okay, so we all know how curmudgeoned I am. I even checked out that luggage and I was even blown away. So you mean, that means it's got, you know, that stamp of the curmudgeon Kyle approval, so. Wow. I don't know. And I'm about to take it with me on our first international trip since having kids. So Kid. excited. <laughs> Kid. Kid. <Thank laughs> not, not pregnant. Yeah. Right um, hence the beer. Uh, but our first international trip after having a baby and we're going to Canada. Yeah. Canada. I say international. It's international. Canada. It's, it's Canada and poutine. We're going to get poutine. Oh, yeah. In Tim Hortons. So, come on. Anyway, we didn't get into the budget, did we? <laughs> we were talking about SingCon and New Orleans and travel and and our extra income that we got this month. It, and that spurred the conversation because October was just a really high expense month for my business. And therefore, yeah. which was tight. So, the fact that your bonus is coming in right now was like, very, very good. Huge deal. I know we got some comments from the last video that says like, you know, you guys talk about like money so tight, but look at you, you know, you're high income earners and whatnot. And it's not lost on me either. I think Kyle and I operate from a very like conservative heart and we've come from backgrounds where money has felt tight. And so even though on paper it looks this good, we still like want that safety yeah. net. Well, this we is, want a big, big safety net. This is a huge anomaly month. I think this is the biggest income month we've ever had. I mean, that that's an insane amount of money. Um, it doesn't usually go like that. But what's weird is our our comfort level of how much you know under budget I want to be continues to grow the older I become. Like when I was in, you know, when I was in grad school and we were still living in that $700 a month apartment, it was like, hey, we got $10 left over. This is great. Um, and now as I get older, I'm like, if it's not $1,000 that we're under budget, I'm a little worried. And I feel like as I get older, that number is going to increase. Um, so, yeah, we understand. We've, we've definitely, you know, we've definitely been in those situations where it's a, uh, uh, how are we going to do this this month? Um, and we worked hard, and now we don't have to do that anymore. And that's why we're doing this. It's that way, hopefully, we can set a good model for other folks to try and achieve the same. Mm -hmm. So I, I get that. It's a good comment. And I like it when we get called out on that because it does humble us, and it does remind us of what we used to have to do and where we are now. It makes us more thankful. Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the numbers because... That's what everybody's here for. <laughs> uh, 
I actually had to increase our grocery budget by another hundred bucks. And I actually pulled money. I think I pulled money from just this net right here because I saw us going over the 750 mark because it was like the day before Halloween. And I was like, oh, we need to get more stuff. We were buying more food because we were hosting people. And it ends up being like, even when we host just like an extra couple over, I mean, it's more mouths to feed and we go through the food and we love hosting. Oh yeah. We love hosting. So we had to put more money. So $846 is what we spent on groceries for the month. I wonder if that number will ever come back down. <laughs> I feel like we've been talking for two years how it's been slowly going up and up and up and up and up. And I'm like, is it ever going to go the other direction? Mm -hmm. So that's all right. I mean, it, we're doing all right. Um, I also feel like October, November, December are high grocery bill months between Thanksgiving and the holidays and all that stuff. You just spend more money on food, on everything. Yeah. You sure do. Also, I just saw this car expense line because we set aside a hundred dollars for car maintenance and repairs and stuff. And so we have $1,200, which seems like a lot, but honestly, when you think about major car repairs, just like normal wear and tear of your vehicle tires. And I know we're due for an oil change. Like that has to happen when we get back from, from Vancouver. Cause it's been a long time. Yeah. Okay. That's the fixed expenses. You want to go into fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Restaurants, we were like right under $50. Yeah. We didn't go to happy hour on our, we did, didn't do our Friday happy hour one time. So yeah, so like we usually spend about 50 bucks on our Friday happy hour. So there we go. Yep. Cool. We had some lunches and stuff. Oh, there was that, um, there was that week where we ordered Panera in the middle of the week because I think you were sick or you had just gotten your boosters, yeah, your flu and shot, and we were like so busy. And I hadn't gone to the grocery store and we're like, just get Panera. That was the first time we had Panera in years. Might be many more years. <laughs> I know. Panera <laughs> used to be good and now it's just like, it's so inconsistent. I don't know. That batch was good, I guess. But let's get down to the real fun stuff because we spent some money on the fun and the LA bucket list category. What did we spend money on? I went to a Spurs game. A Spurs game? Technically, I went to a Clippers game, but they <laughs> okay. were the Spurs. Okay, so you went to the Staples Arena in downtown LA. Crypto.com. Crypto. It's not Staples? So it's the Crypto.com Arena and they have the Staples center in the middle of it it's somehow at least google Maps says it's both at the same time oh i don't know i don't care enough to look it up but i did get to see the new seven foot three or four guy play that was fun on the spurs team yeah they lost by 40 but it was bad and it was about as bad as it sounds anyways nonetheless that was one thing that we did what else did we do we went to Universal Studios oh, yeah. for my birthday. So uh, I think I mentioned this on the last episode that I really wanted to go to Harry Potter World for my birthday. And it was just Kyle and I. It was so fun. We had a great time. Harry Potter World was all that and more. I We got wands. I was literally the only adult doing the magic spells with the 10-year-old kids. And... Because I was using Dumbledore's wand, I actually got the spell to work the very first time. It was like opening up a flower. And one of the kids that was next to me, he couldn't get the spell. And a cast member came over and he saw me do it right off the, the gate. And I was like, who saw that? I created magic. And the cast member looks at my wand and he goes, oh, yeah, it's because she has the elder wand. That's why. Obviously. So. It was, it was a magical time. That was the best part of Universal Studios. The worst part of Universal was uh, Mario World, actually. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Not worth it. Not worth it at all. The world itself is really cool. Oh, the way that they've got it designed and structured, it's really, really cool. It is. Except it was an hour and a half wait for the Mario Kart ride. 
And then I got stuck on the ride for five minutes. It just like powered down. I'm like, what's going on? And then the the kids, so they gave out, well, they didn't give out. You could purchase wristbands and you could go around and bump the little question mark blocks and get coins and play a game virtually, kind of like how Harry Potter set up with the, with the wands. But the thing is, every single time they bumped their wrist to the block to get coins, it made that coin sound. We're going to play it here. And every single time, it was just like... Non-stop for hour and a half, two hours. <laughs> As you're waiting in line yeah. for this ride, so... It was the first augmented reality ride that I had been on, so I had some appreciation for that technology, but by the time I got through the line, and like the line, the way it's set up is that it's not in the shade, it's in the sun, so you're standing in the sun the whole time. It, it gets brutal. Anyways, we're, mm -hmm. we're ranting. You don't want to know what about, how, how exciting are we? We're talking about our adventure of standing in line. It's just fantastic, well, guys. You got to try it sometime. Well, uh, I will say, Harry Potter World just completely. I mean, the the butter beer, yeah, the butter beer alone, and the fact that they had English style real beers in there as well. Yeah, just yeah. I would go back for Harry Potter World. Everything else, just well. We didn't do enough. We didn't, we didn't do get enough. Through Jurassic. We didn't do Simpsons. We didn't do no. uh, the Transformers. We. We were so late, much more. Late picking up the kid, and she was not happy. She about was it. not happy. She was very sad. Poor thing. Okay, so that's why we spent seven hundred dollars on the fun money slide. The reason why we could spend so high this month is because every single month we're putting three hundred dollars aside into a separate LA bucket list sinking fund, and then we're just building that up. And the reason why we're prioritizing this is because LA is not a long term city for us. We're trying to enjoy it while we're here and take advantage of it. And one of the ways that we know we can give ourselves permission to spend is if we put money aside in a separate sinking fund and keep shoveling just a couple hundred bucks, which we can do so because you can see how we've got our budget allocated and why we have things set up the way that we do. Shopping, we spent $250, not bad there. Uh, I spent money from my clothing budget. And in fact, I got to rework that because I know I didn't spend $170 on clothes because I took back a whole bunch of stuff. What I do nowadays is I go to Target, I run through, grab everything that I want to try on, buy it, go home, try it on at home, and then return it. And the reason why I do it is because I just don't have enough time to sit in the dressing room and do it. Oh, yeah, especially because I think on that time you had Quinn with you. And it's yeah. like you can't really like take your time to try on clothes when you got a two-year-old. Like, Yeah, there's no way. Not happening. Okay, subscriptions. What pulled out? Oh, Costco membership renewal that pulled out. So that's good. I'm glad we have that on auto renew. It used to not be. Okay, do we want to go down to future? Yeah. Okay. So I actually already updated all of the things except for your stuff. Cool. But all of my investments have slightly gone down. So that's why we're still hovering around this 175 for the down payment fund. So I think last month I was at 174.2. Now it's at 175.4. Oh, good. Um, and also I didn't realize this, but I meant to just change that monthly reoccurring contribution to the down payment fund to $500, but it actually pulled a thousand because I forgot to change the auto contributions on Ally. Yeah. So it really did pull a thousand. That's okay for this month because we had such a sur surplus, but for next month, I went ahead and changed it to the five. And then also I'm changing, I'm changing that because we're putting more money towards the vacation fund. Somebody said in the last episode, they're like, that's dangerous for you to do. I don't think so. We have a really hefty down payment fund. I think going five, like doing a 500, 600 split or a five, five split between vacation and down payment is totally okay right now. doesn't mean that it's permanent. So anyway, What's what's the updates on Robin Hood? <laughs> uh, $21,730. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? 3000 I was on the wrong line. 
Okay. Wow. You made some money. A little bit. That's great. Sweet. We, we, can we just take Weeble off and Stash off? Like, that's such small amounts. Okay. Yeah. We can take it off for next month. I won't. Yeah. I, we, we don't have to update it. It just seems like it's not enough money to. To really track? Yeah. Track on the budget? Yeah. Okay. Well, we can still track it. The cool thing is we can still track all of our other like robo advising investing on Projection Lab. Okay. And Projection Lab is basically a financial planning simulator tool where you can track your net worth and your progress towards financial independence. It's such an amazing tool. I've been using it with my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. We personally use it. It's been awesome. Uh, it's linked below if you want to test ride that for free. Um, everything else has, again, been updated. The vacation fund. What's going on here? Why fifty-seven dollars? Hmm. Was that um, from New Orleans? Did you use some of that? Uh, Forty-nine ninety-one. Oh, oh! This was the the remaining of when I came home from Kansas City because I flew back on the first. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's probably just like random things I purchased in the airport, milk, and all that stuff for Quinn. So. That's a look at everything. Uh, somebody also asked about the IRAs, why we were tracking it here. Am I contributing to it with pre-tax dollars? Uh, no, no to the Roth and the traditional. The SEP IRA, yes, but inconsistently. Um, and I like to track it here just for updates and see how it's going. The only thing that we're consistently contributing to pre-tax dollar wise is Kyle's 401k and he's maxing that out. By the way, the max contribution is going up for 2024. Not a shocker, but cool. if you're interested in maxing that out. Yep. What are we doing with the mega surplus? I think we gotta, we gotta put it in a rainy day fund. I think we got to do a high yield savings account with it. I think we should include it as our moving budget or moving expenses budget. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can just say that's, you know, I mean, we have some high yield savings account right now, right? Well, and that's so what the like, down payment is in. So if we throw it all in there and then we say like moving expenses come out of this too, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of our rainy day fund too. If, if you know, stuff goes really bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you really want it on moving expenses. <laughs> I do. And nothing else. This is a non-negotiable thing here. No, no. It? I'm. I no. I agree with you. The emergency fund plus any of the savings that we have including the down payment, including what you might have in Robinhood, we would totally pull from it in order to, if somebody were to lose their job. Yeah. I don't think that's happening, but no. I'm glad you're thinking ahead. And the only reason why you're bringing this up is because you, you think in worst case scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've done a lot of repivoting of your business and stuff, and we're still waiting to see that consistent income come back up. Yeah. And so like, that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm thinking about. That makes sense. So, yeah. Otherwise, if, you know, number two on that list, moving expenses, yeah, it's a good chunk of money to put towards that. So, because we we're budgeting for gifts. We've got enough money in the vacation fund for Vancouver. Um, yeah, gifts looks really good right now. Yeah. So, I think we're all good there. Okay. Well... This has been a productive beers and budgeting episode, I think. Yeah. Uh, I definitely feel like I can sleep well at night because I know the goals that we have and what we're trying to achieve. So that feels really good. And don't forget, if you want to check out that Monos luggage, especially for the holidays, because that's coming up and either for yourself or for somebody else in your life, you can use code debt free millennials at checkout to get 10% off your purchase with Monos. I will leave my link below for you to check out and cheers you guys. We'll see you next month.